Inside a dark room, a mysterious man works hard on drawing and measuring diagrams on a map, taking many details into account for an important plan. Then he puts on a fluffy coat and leaves the house in a hurry. Meanwhile at a financial company, David is having a very difficult conversation with a client on the phone because he has lost lots of money right before Christmas. After he hangs up, his co-worker Corey comes to steal his candy and cheer him up. He also reminds David that his crush Emily will be leaving the company after New Year's, so he needs to ask her out soon or he will miss his chance. However David doesn't think it is a good idea, regardless if his crush has been going on for a long time. Later that night, David and Corey enjoy the office Christmas party, and while Corey drinks with their other buddies, David tries to chat with Emily. However their conversation is terribly awkward and it ends quickly. Moments later, Emily leaves the party and David rushes after her to tell her she forgot her hat, except she is wearing hers. This interruption causes her to lose yet another cab, and David uses the chance to finally ask her out. Emily accepts, and when she tries to stop a taxi, David offers to take her home instead. When she takes the offer, David first stops inside to let Corey know he is leaving. However Corey is very drunk and reminds David he promised he would take him home too, so now David has no choice but to deal with a third wheel. During the ride, Corey keeps on drinking and making dumb comments, making the mood in the car very awkward and causing David to apologize to Emily multiple times. Corey also asks David for his phone because he lost his at the party, but this only ends up with David's phone quickly running out of battery. It is the middle of a very freezing night yet Corey insists on having pizza, begging David to stop at a nearby ATM for cash so he can buy his food. David offers to pay with his own card, but Corey says that the restaurant doesn't accept cards. When they make it to the ATM, Corey goes inside while David and Emily wait in the car chatting about the protection charm David keeps in the vehicle. Suddenly Corey starts making signals because he is apparently having a card problem, so David also goes inside to help. Emily soon begins feeling cold and alone in the car, so just after a few seconds she decides to join the guys. She tries to lock the car on her way out, but it doesn't work. When Emily enters the ATM, David explains that the car lock is broken, but they won't take long so there is no need to worry. He then takes some cash from the ATM because Corey's card is denied for some reason. When the trio turns around and is about to leave, they suddenly notice a figure wearing a fluffy coat outside. Emily thinks it is rather strange because she doesn't see any car around, and David immediately thinks it could be a robber. However Corey thinks it is just a man that needs to use the ATM, so he tells his friends to stop being paranoid. When Corey opens the door and takes a step out, the man walks forward, scaring Corey into going back inside. Then Corey shouts out, asking the man if he wants to come inside, but gets no response. The guy just stands there in the dark, looking creepily at the three of them without moving a single muscle. Suddenly, a dog walker appears behind the mysterious man, who immediately turns around and rushes to the newcomer, grabbing his head to smash it and kill him. Terrified, the trio wants to call 911, but they realize that David's phone is charging in the car and Emily left hers in her purse, which is also in the car. Desperate for a solution, they start looking for emergency buttons inside the booth, but they can't find anything. Outside, the man continues to stand there, watching them as if nothing creepy had happened. Afterward, David asks Emily to give him his car keys, and when Corey tries to stop him from going out, David swears he can manage to run to the car to take his phone and call the police before the man can get to him. At that moment, the mysterious guy approaches David's car and takes out a toolbox, then goes to the back of the booth. Suddenly the trio begins hearing noises and the power goes out for just a second. When it comes back, the temperature begins to drop and they realize the man has used the tool kit to break the ATM's heater. It seems the guy wants them to die slowly instead of attacking them like he did with the dog walker. As the man returns to his watching spot, David begins to hit the enclosing glass, hoping to set off the ATM's alarm, but Emily stops him because breaking the glass would allow the guy to get in. Next David and Corey begin kicking the ATM in another attempt to set off the alarm, but nothing happens. Emily notices there's a smoke alarm too, but none of them has a lighter. Suddenly some lights appear in the distance and Corey spots a police car, so the trio starts to yell to get its attention. Unfortunately, the car passes by without noticing them. While the man listens to them from behind the booth, David gets an idea, they should give the man their money and jewels, maybe that will get him to leave. In an envelope from the ATM, they put Emily's earrings, Corey's watch, and David's $500. Then David comes out, showing he means no harm, and throws the envelope toward the man, begging him to let them go. When the man picks up the envelope, David takes the chance and immediately runs to his car. As the mysterious man comes after him, David attempts to start the car, only to discover the wires have been cut. Next he picks up Emily's phone and dials 911, but at that moment the man strikes the window, dragging David out of the car. A struggle ensues between both men, causing David to accidentally drop the phone in the process. Since the mysterious guy is grabbing him by the jacket, David takes it off and runs back into the booth. To their surprise the man doesn't chase after him, instead he grabs Emily's phone and throws it into the car trunk with the envelope. Next, Emily uses her lipstick to write help on the door, while the guys finally make a hole in the wall, but the alarm still doesn't ring. 
Emily tries to use David's card on the ATM by putting the code backward, believing this is supposed to alert the police, but Corey points out it is an urban legend. Time starts to pass, and the trio soon begins to feel the freezing temperature. When they don't see the guy outside, Corey thinks of leaving, but Emily stops him. Then Corey begins wondering if this guy is David's client who wants revenge for all the money he lost with their company, and an argument ensues. Thankfully the cold quickly makes them shut up and they decide to hold hands to warm them up. Suddenly a car with a security guard sees Emily's message and drives over to investigate. As the guard approaches the booth, the trio tries to warn him about the killer and beg him to call the police. Unfortunately the guard barely can take two steps before the mysterious man appears next to him and beats him to death with a tire iron. Losing all hope, Emily sits in a corner of the booth in a clear depressed mood, and Corey and David wonder if the cold is getting to her brain. At that moment, the man enters the booth, so David and Corey immediately begin to fight him before he can hurt them. The three men fall to the floor in a fierce struggle, and David suddenly sees some wire hanging from the ATM, which he grabs and uses to strangle the mysterious man while Corey holds him down. Afterward they are disturbed by the fact they had to kill to survive, but suddenly they notice something outside, the mysterious man is still there watching them. The trio checks the wallet they find in the body's pockets and discovers it is just a worker with a family that had wanted to use the ATM and happened to be wearing the same jacket as the killer, which makes them feel even worse. Moments later, the mysterious guy returns to the back of the booth to work on something while Corey takes the jacket from the body to warm himself up. Then David and Corey begin blaming each other for being stuck here, and an argument ensues that soon becomes physical. Emily begs them to stop, and a frustrated Corey ends up storming out to escape alone, ignoring his friend's pleas to stay. After taking a few steps, Corey trips over a wire the man has set up, and the guy immediately comes to stab Corey with a screwdriver. David wants to help him, but Emily keeps him inside, and David accidentally pushes her too hard. Once Corey is out, the mysterious man returns to the back door of the ATM, taking a fire hose with him. Emily and David can't believe they lost a friend and try to comfort each other. David confesses he knew the hat he grabbed at the party was not Emily's, it had just been an excuse to talk to her, and then the duo shares a kiss. They suddenly are startled by a noise outside, it seems the man is still working on the back of the ATM. At that moment, they notice Corey is moving and therefore actually alive, so the duo takes advantage of the killer being at the back to run out and grab Corey, bringing him back inside before the man can catch them. Emily and David then cover Corey's wound with flyers and Emily's jacket, hoping to stop the bleeding and prevent hypothermia. While David begins hitting the ATM with the trash can as a desperate last attempt to activate an alarm, the mysterious man pushes David's car in front of the ATM to block the door and leaves. Only a second passes before the ATM booth begins to fill with cold water through the heating vents, courtesy of the hose the man connected at the back. Emily and David try to lift Corey up above the water to no avail, but David at least finds a lighter in one of the jacket's pockets. While Corey dies floating in the water and the man sets up a chair outside to continue his watch, David sets some flyers on fire and tries to activate the smoke alarm, but he can't reach it no matter what part of the booth he climbs. Throwing the flyers in the trash can doesn't help either, but then Emily gets an idea, she sits on David's shoulders and raises the can, finally managing to get the flame close enough to trigger the fire alarm. They are happy to finally succeed, however at that moment David slips, causing Emily to fall and smash her head on a shelf, instantly dying. David is crying and clinging to Emily's body when suddenly, the mysterious man rams the security guard's car against David's, which crashes through the glass. Having lost everything, a furious David grabs Corey's bottle of wine and with a piece of jacket, he turns it into a Molotov, then he goes outside and throws it at the man on the chair. The figure immediately catches on fire, however it is revealed that it is not the mysterious man but actually the security man's body wearing the same coat. The real man is still watching from a distance. At last, a bunch of police officers and firemen show up and surround the ATM, causing the man to vanish. David tries to tell them what happened, but instead he gets arrested, because when they check the security cameras, the story looks quite different. There is no audio, and the mysterious man always stayed far enough to avoid appearing on the recording. So the final result makes it look like David, Corey, and Emily were robbing the ATM and murdered the family man for being a witness. It also makes it look like David murdered his two friends. While the police take David away, he sees the mysterious man hanging among the curious crowd. Sometime later, the mysterious man returns to his room to make a new plan. It turns out he is a serial killer, and he always makes intricate plans to catch people in ATMs, leaving the last survivor to take the blame. Hey, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more awesome content. So feel free to leave a comment below and let me know what you think. I'll see you in the next one, bye.